and I like I went up to this horse like in front of me and I I like held its face and looked in the eyes and it showed me a mental image oh, wow. of where the other horse was and I turned around and I was like I know where the horse is and they my whole family was like what do you mean <laughs> you know, like what are you talking about and I told them like I saw the horse like in the right field it's foot was stuck in barbed wire it couldn't get out um I was like it's just over there in the woods and they all like they thought I was crazy like my I remember my cousins laughing at me and I felt embarrassed I felt that heat remember I, I talked about um from my trauma like I felt the heat in my cheeks and I felt embarrassed and I remember like not wanting to speak what I was seeing after that point um and so I had seen essentially like where the horse was, they ended up 30 minutes later finding the horse and they came back and said it was exactly as I'd seen it. And Lawrence, I'm curious, what, what is your story? Like, what do you do? Cause I've, I don't know anything about you. <laughs> uh, I have a lot as well. Uh, I, because you woken up like four years old, right? And yes. I think I woke up like April last year. Mm. And, wow. and I mean, uh, what you call accelerated program or something. It's yeah. more harsher than a longer one. So mm -hmm. because you're roller coaster ride is very short mm. so and yep uh, i do um what they taught me is akashic reading so far and we did some what do you call this missions i i have uh, another group of uh um i'm not sure you call them starseed like workers that we do missions on our own something like that grid work and everything then I, my initial gift was like, uh, I do higher selves drawing. Yeah. So oh, I, cool. I draw them because like there's one guy who I just interviewed like yesterday mm -hmm. and he he asked me to draw his higher self, but he, he knows his higher self from the prominent one is the white dragon. Uh -huh. But the one came is a throne angel. I was like, what? It's different. Then I started drawing. Then I said, I feel icy when I'm drawing. Uh -huh. And he was like, well, um, well, that's his element. Then I just realized that that was one of his, well, technically it's not past life, right? So it's one of his dimensional him. Wow. He, so it's another angel song. That's so cool. So you guys essentially traded wisdom with each other about his guides? Uh, um, more like, um, how do you say this? Uh, I, I just see them, I sketch them, that's it. Yeah, but, okay, so you're like a visual translator of what yeah, you Yeah, some, something like that. Even the, if I do Akashic, I normally say, uh, mental image, please. So, because I don't, I don't have a clear audience, sometimes I do, but yeah. they use it in a weird way, like, wake up, someone, someone does it like that, yeah. was, but very. So what kind of clear? Oh, I'll ask this later. What kind of clears do you have? Just I'm um, yeah, that's a great question. So I'm a believer that we have access to all the clears. Mm -hmm. and that they'll come through essentially like the universe will speak through any of those clears. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a dominant one, I believe, and you can actually see it in the human design chart. It's called like your sixth sense. Mm -hmm. And mine is um I've I would define it by two. I've got the emotional sense. So like I can feel other people's emotions or I feel the oh. emotional body and I interpret the emotional body first. So that's kind of like my, that's the sensation that I experience most dominantly, if that makes sense. Yes, very, because um, I'm going to put in something in here. Um, You know telepathy, right? Yes. Like um, when, do you, you know astral travel, right? And when you pop off your body, and I did pop off my body halfway on my first tries, yeah. of like I can hear the low uh -huh. vibration hum on my initial tries, but when you get away from your body, the sound goes away, right? 
So mm. what the point is that your physical body is like low vibrational. And when you ascend, the vibration goes up. Mm -hmm. Now, your body can only perceive what vibration it's in. Yes. So yeah. when it reaches the point that it can sense thoughts and emotions, that's when you unlock that, the one that you're having. Yes, exactly. I think your your vibra your body is vibrationally aligned to pick those up. Well, yeah. some don't have it, so. Yeah, some some um, didn't come with that exact design that they mm -hmm. picked up themselves. Yeah, and there's reasons for that, as we know, with past lives and our mission, you know, or who we're here to partner with at this time. Um, but yeah. I love these like this conversation. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's so let's start before we throw away too many good stuff. Okay. So, uh, hi, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, this is Lawrence again for Angels Regalia Collective podcast, and we're featuring our energy body uh, coach Cassie. And I'm glad for you to be here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> So uh, we had a nice conversation before the show and, you know, when you went to like-minded people, those with the same way, way blank and they're like, they're vibing it very good. I almost forgot starting it. So, so it's just started. Um, or my initial question is like, uh, tell me your spiritual awakening or what triggered your spiritual awakening? Yeah. Um, it's it I kind of mentioned it to you before and I love how you like create a form for this podcast it was really nice <laughs> to like kind of speak on myself because I, I don't do that often I'm like not great at sharing about what I do um so this is a real gift to me Lawrence thank, thank you, you. <laughs> um so yeah I I woke up at the age of four and it happened through like the awareness that I was awake or that I was in a physical form, like I became aware of my body, I was molested as a child. Oh. At four years old. And in trauma, it can go one of two ways. It can go, you either remember everything vividly from that point forward, mm -hmm. or you kind of kind of stow away years of your life and you forget it and you can't access it. Like it's like locked away in your subconscious. Mm. And I was the kid who remembered everything vividly. Oh, boy. Um, so if you imagine as a child being awoken in that way and not having words or context yet for what had, what was happening to you, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like was in a state of fear immediately, like just thrown into fear. And I remember it's, just, it's like funny because I, I don't necessarily like, go by a religion anymore like i mm -hmm. i understand um faith to be associated with like just our consciousness like understand that we are you know that we are god consciousness here that we're awake and aware um but as a kid my parents would read the bible to me and they had just started doing this around the time that i was being molested by a babysitter and as a four-year-old, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't tell them. I was just kind of, I was honestly embarrassed and scared. Um, but my parents read the story of Adam and Eve to me. Mm -hmm. as a four-year-old, And they got to the part about how like they realized they were naked and they felt shame. And I remember when my parents read that to me as a four-year-old, my face got like red hot. Oh. Like I, like I felt the deepest embarrassment or like shame in that moment as a kid. And I understood as a four-year-old in that moment, right from wrong, instantly. Or what happened through your traumatic experience? Yes. Yeah. Quick question, because normally when people um, experience traumatic experience, they mm -hmm. happen to get soul losses. Yes. Did that happen to you? Oh, yeah. Yes, oh. for many years, um, for many years. And I kind of came out of that. And I'll, I'll share a little bit about that when we talk about sure. uh, when my gifts, like when I consciously tapped into my gifts and like chose to like step into my my light and my truth mm -hmm. and like embody it. Um, at that age, 
if you can imagine like trauma can cause all kinds of different things right like it can cause learning disabilities like for oh, looks like we me. oh i lost you for a moment there oh sorry yeah. just like the soul fragments you mm -hmm. were mentioning um and one of those was that there was something wrong with me that like mm. i deeply believe that something was wrong with me because when i did eventually tell my parents you know at four years old in the words i could because i finally understood what was going on um they were horrified they they were so upset and i remember as a kid really feeling you know that heaviness from that moment um so there was kind of like this seed that was planted that told me i wasn't and like something was messed up about me. How and old? That, how old were you on this? Still four years old. Four. Mm -hmm. oh, when, wow. Yeah, all this happened, and I like I told them, you know, in symbols, like like trying to show them what had happened, and it didn't take my parents long to pick up on what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, for like information purposes, my mom's a kindergarten teacher. Oh, so okay. She, she works with young children a lot. Um, so she was amazing as like a mother growing up, like really understood like how I learned. And um, the thing that was so special about this, this whole thing was my parents did everything to protect me after that. Like they created so much safety for me. And I think a lot of people who go through that do not have like the, the protection that I had with my family and like the guardianship. That's and it nice. Really yeah, it really taught me at a young age that the divine isn't like, doesn't want me to feel this way. Like I, like I would never make myself in that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. if it makes sense. Um, so it kind of like put my trust in my elders or who was around me at that time. Um, so yeah, I grew up really close to my family. I experienced a lot of soul fragments, I think from that situation. One was I had like trouble learning um, and like had to be medicated for that. And I had dyslexia where I'd like see things backwards. Um, but I learned from that is that it's actually not dyslexia or it's actually not um, like the other thing was ADD. Mm -hmm. And what I realized is those were my gifts that were being medicated in school because like I would be like sitting in class and I would be like, you know, losing concentration because I was seeing people's light bodies. I was seeing into people's energy fields and I was like feeling the room around me. And I remember I would like doodle as a kid, like all over my assignment pages. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and like it it was hard in school. It was really hard because like, I didn't want to study those things because they were hard to focus on. And yeah. I think cause my, my gifts were coming online and I wasn't, you know, attuned to, or in the right environment to, to focus on those. Um, so yeah, I was medicated really young. And I think a lot of people in my generation specifically went through that time period, at least in the US where they were medicated um, and their gifts were stunted for a while. And around the time that I, I guess like consciously decided to, to step into my gifts and like use my awareness and like the things that I learned. And as a kid, like I'd have crazy psychic experiences Lawrence like no. I would like I would talk with horses and like I like I have like I'll tell you one story if you're open to, to, to go hear. ahead um my my aunt and uncle owned a farm mm -hmm. and when I was six we went over there for like a family um gathering or something my grandma lived with them at the time and we went to this this family farm and one of the horses that they had had gone missing they had two horses and I remember everyone was like crying and upset and running around. I was like, I was six years old at the time. I remember I was like in kindergarten. Um, and like I said, like, I remember everything so vividly. <laughs> from what I did. Um, and I remember like feeling everybody's emotional state, but not feeling it inside myself. Like I, un like I had a peace, almost like I like, like I wasn't supposed to be afraid or something. It was like, mm -hmm. it was something that I, I don't know if I can explain it to you in like human words, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like it is just like this awareness that I could do something. And uh, as a six year old, you mm -hmm. know, and I like, I went up to this horse, like in front of me and I, 
I like held its face and looked in the eyes and it showed me a mental image oh, wow. of where the other horse was. And I turned around and I was like, I know where the horse is. And they, my whole family was like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, like, what are you talking about? And I told them, like, I saw the horse, like in the right field, it's foot was stuck in barbed wire. It couldn't get out. Um, I was like, it's just over there in the woods. And they all like, they thought I was crazy. Like my, I remember my cousins laughing at me and I felt embarrassed. I felt that heat to remember. I, I talked about, um, from my trauma, like I felt the heat in my cheeks and I felt embarrassed. And I remember like not wanting to speak what I was seeing after that point. Um, and so I had seen essentially like where the horse was, they ended up 30 minutes later finding the horse and they came back and said it was exactly as I'd seen it. Oh, wow. And they like my cousin like apologized to me for laughing and like it just like it was a really important moment for me as a kid to like witness receiving like telepathy from an animal or like an awareness that not everyone can can do this yet, if that makes sense. Yep. Can you do this remotely? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. So um, my other question is that when you start feeling other people's emotions and mental images, mm -hmm. there's a time when some people couldn't differentiate what they are feeling and what mm -hmm. the other people is feeling. So how do you know it's your emotions and not other people? Yeah, that's a great question. So everyone has a signature kind of um, chakra in the body mm -hmm. or energy center that we flow from. Um, we flow from the divine with. And mm -hmm. mine is in the emotional joy center. So like my signature emotional state will be light. Like it'll feel like lightness in my body. I'll feel joyful, I'll feel creative and playful. Um, and you can actually look that up in astrology. But I think when I saw that in my chart and read it, I realized like the moments when I was being pulled out of my body energy wise. Does oh, that make wow. sense? Um, so like seeing that in my chart woke me up to the realization that, oh, I'm in charge of like the energy that pulls on me or doesn't, if that makes sense. Yep. So um, how, when your soul losses, uh, when did you manage to retrieve all of them? Mm -hmm. It's been over time. Um, mm -hmm. It's been like picking up pieces through different... Um, relationships through different goals being met through friendships um, jobs just i think i've been on the journey since i think since college like when i quit medication that mm -hmm. i'd been on since i was a kid that was like kind of when the awareness came to me so had, what oh go ahead just that i had things to retrieve okay so when you stopped medication, did your abilities went hyperdrive or? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I yeah. guess. <clears throat> yeah, it was intense. Because um, I'd been on that medication from the age of, I want to say it was in fourth grade when I started. And I'd had issues all the way up from there, you know, because mm -hmm. my gifts were coming online, you know, <laughs> like I was talking to horses. And I was like, um, I was like, I like had another thing where I like prayed for um, an animal that fell through a construction site and it lived and like there was like crazy things I told my parents as a kid or dream you know it's just like my gifts wow. were coming online and it was obvious to my family and to me um and you know if you talk to my parents they would tell you like when I was like a little kid like I'd go to the beach and be um dancing to music mm -hmm. that like no one could hear like my dad he he was like, he thought it was the coolest thing when he took me to the beach for the first time. Um, he always tells that story. He's like, he's like, you just like heard music none of us could hear. And I remember like seeing castles like in the ocean when I was a oh, kid. Wow. You know, like I like I remember seeing structures, architecture, stone, carved stone, like, and I remember like, you know, speaking to different beings as a kid, like a lion. I was about, I was about yeah. to ask for that. Did you encounter in the entities on those castles? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, yeah. I remember connecting with myself in as someone in that area, in that place. Um, mm -hmm. So it was interesting because I was always met by myself in like in the beings I was speaking with. Mm -hmm. 
So um, my other one is that you do animals, right? So have you applied it to humans per se? Mm -hmm. Have you tried? Oh, there you go. Do you yeah. have uh, more ex stories about those as well? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I haven't been openly like practicing with my gifts until like, I want to say it was almost a year ago mm -hmm. that I kind of like shared, I was like, I want to start doing astrology readings with people. I want to start bringing this stuff to the collective publicly. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, I was a vegan weight loss coach and life coach for five years or four years prior to that. And I worked as the community manager and I, I trained up all our leaders and I was like helping women eat vegan and like lose weight. And um, yeah, I was, I was doing it there as a coach. And I would like, I do one-on-one -on -one calls like this with clients and I would just like know things about them instantly. And like, I'd see their life playing in front of me like a movie when I was talking to them. And so I'd be like, oh, like, you know, does your husband like not approve of this? Like, does he make you feel really bad about the choices you're making right now? And she's like, how, like, you know, people are like, how do you know that? Like, how do you, like, how are you seeing my life like that? And like, I was just able to instantly connect with people and help them. And I think help them faster than, than it, than it could go if I wasn't connecting with that deeper part of them. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. I guess you have a lot more stories than that. You I, have, probably... I can tell you stories all day, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> you may probably have to read part 10, part 11. <laughs> Just kidding. So, uh, but maybe <laughs> sooner or later. So, um, so a lot of people have uh, more questions about uh, guidance, guides, higher selves. Mm -hmm. Have you encountered those and which ones and you can tell about? Yeah. Um, so I channel. I, mm -hmm. I channel beings that I've connected with and that I would say are a part of me. Like I'm, I can embody their energy like they can embody mine. Mm -hmm. um, one of those is the queen of heaven. I call her QH. <laughs> and um, she is my direct link through Cassiopeia, which there's a whole nother story, Lawrence, I'd have to tell you about, like as a kid remembering those origins and my mom and I having conversations about the constellation. And um, there's just a lot I could tell you around <laughs> that. Yeah, I'll, I'll channel the queen of heaven and I do it a lot when I'm opening an astrology chart. I'll begin to see the child self in people and speak directly to that part. Sometimes um, people will embody their child self with me and they'll begin to cry or they'll begin to like um, even play or be silly or like like parts of their child will come out in a call. Oh, wow. um, and then sometimes like I can pull out the higher self in someone else or I can pull out someone else's guides and they begin to channel or they begin to um practice their gifts in front of me like i i don't know how else to explain that i, I so, understand <laughs> yeah yeah very it just kind of comes through <laughs> so um who do you take uh, guidance from do you have uh guides that you talk with or your higher self guides you do you get messages or you do this and do this or something like that or you just trust your intuition because you're already connected to them yeah so, so um, since I was a kid, I could see spirits, like mm -hmm. I could see those who have passed on. Um, and I don't always, I'm not always at that frequency, so I'm not always seeing that, but I can, I can go there and see those things if I, if I need to, or if sometimes things can come through if they need to. Um, but my, my great grandmother and my grandmother are on my spirit team. So I have ancestors. Yep. And they come through cardinals to me. Um, they come through names, um, numbers. They they send me codes, light codes, essentially. And my great grandmother Lorraine I actually have her middle name, um, Cassie Lorraine, and she is like, she's just followed me everywhere. <laughs> like oh. um, she was adopted, and like I inherited a bunch of her things because I'm named after her. And one of the things that she had, the only thing she had from her childhood was this spoon. And I inherited the spoon. It's got like this 
boy with curly hair and he's holding like a ship Mm -hmm. and um i ended up getting that spoon turned into a ring because i was like what am i going to do with a baby spoon? you know like i'm you know i want to be able to pass this on my daughters and like their their daughters you know it's like i I want this to be like a family thing so i was like i'll turn it into a piece of jewelry and you know i you never know what your ancestors want if you don't ask right so i i asked her i said you know lorraine like how would you feel if i turned your spoon into a ring and i didn't hear anything immediately i felt i felt her with me i felt like she was saying yes but you know the universe is generous like the universe will always provide more um, confirmation as you yeah. move towards the thing you're doing. Um, so I started looking for places I called and I got a hold of this one woman who makes them. And she said, oh, there's only one place in Nashville um, that does this. And so I went there and the name of that place was called Lorraine's French Shop, <laughs> which I'm like, like the only place in the place that I live, that's the only place that did it. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So there's stuff like that. You know, it's like she she would give me signs or we kind of talk with each other and she she can materialize or she can speak to me in my sleep. Like I'll, I'll have dreams about my great grandmother and my grandma. Um, but yeah, like and but people who are alive, I have that connection with them as well. So it's like, you know, it's I don't know if it's like a so much a death thing as it's like just our energy it's more like a frequency that you're you're in it's like um because when when we are all empaths right they said if you couldn't talk to the the vessel itself you can pull their higher self and talk to them and you will get the message through them then it normally passes down and suddenly you don't know that it became the relationship becomes good so yeah. something like that Beautifully um, said, yeah. <laughs> so I'm now I'm curious. Uh, so in your family, do you have psychic family who have the same gifts or it's just you? That's a great question. So I would say both my parents tap in. Um, they grew up religious, so I don't know if they're as quickly to acknowledge um, their divinity or their awareness, like their self-awareness and their their powers. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I would say both my parents have those gifts. They both receive dreams and have experiences with, you know, animals and heart telepathy and oh, all wow. this stuff. Yeah, I would say so. That's cool. So, um, what do you call this? Um, is there a time when you receive guidance, where, which is your hesitant to do, and you did it, then suddenly it became a wonderful experience? Yeah, so I did. Um, the <laughs> first, I've had many of those, I guess. But... <laughs> because a lot, a lot of people will be like, give me guidance, guide me, then suddenly, oh no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, so it's... I have a lot of those as well, but they always turn out nice, more better than what I'm thinking. So, yeah, I, you know, I haven't had them in a long time. And I think because we can tell our guides, we can tell our higher self, like where, like the pace we want to go yeah. at. Um, and I, I feel like you know that though. Like as I'm saying that, I feel like you're already yeah. aware of that. I, I think uh, you get most of those. Um, quests or missions or exams on some people that you get these kinds of uh, tests yes. when you are hard on surrendering especially when you're like I'm not gonna trust you yet or something like that you're still doubting every small subconscious uh, belief that you still have holding on there and you couldn't let it go you will experience this see you should have listened everything's fine then suddenly it's too much to um to neg- neglect then mm-hmm. suddenly oh yeah okay i'll trust you now then you mm-hmm. surrender everything then it, it finishes it's like um on my guides on how they say it you're not uh they're not checking your time they're yeah. more on checking your milestones yes so yeah. 
if you have to do this lesson 250 lives yeah. they won't judge you but they will just say you're, you're just a slow learner that's it <laughs> so, yeah. yeah yes yeah i hear what you're saying so, but, so uh, i think the yeah, first one, yeah the first one that came to my mind when you asked that um was when i found out that i'd gotten an offer to do a teacher um like a teaching job in the summer mm -hmm. and I found out that I got to write the curriculum for the class. Oh wow! Which, that's a lot of that's a lot of power, you know. I like know. that's a lot of responsibility and like, and also it requires a lot of creativity and like, you know. I felt really excited about it. The payment was not, you know, um, it wasn't great, but it was for me. It was enough. Like I, I don't know. I've always kind of been someone who. I find a lot of joy just kind of in the moment. So like, I, I wasn't like deterred from it because of that, but I went to my, my family and one of my mother's blocks is finances. And that's something that she's shifted in recently. Mm -hmm. uh, but for her, she was like, she's, she's like, Cassie, don't do it. Like, that's not enough money. You could be doing another job for this much. And I was like, but mom, I get to like teach and I get to write this curriculum and like I get to work with kids. Like I was, <laughs> I was so excited. Um, and so I kind of felt pulled, you know, like I mm -hmm. felt like I had heard myself first, like I'd heard the the divine within me. And it's so like, I knew what the truth was. I was like, oh, but I know, I already know the answer, but I felt my mom's energy pulling on, on my, my wisdom, you know? And so I think I kind of felt that tug and pull that you're you're referencing mm -hmm. and it, essentially I went with what I knew you know like I went with my my wisdom and I ended up doing it three years after that each summer and I got to teach kids prophetic art like how to see through the divine eyes and like how to kind of like tap into their inner voice their inner wisdom um and they saw the most incredible things you know in that class and I got to help them draw it and paint it and write oh, stories. Wow. So, yeah, that was the biggest thing that I can think of. Well, that's great. But technically, oh boy, I think some some of these lessons is not because some listeners uh, where there's no money value of it, out of it. But technically, these experiences are only focused on the person's bliss. If your bliss is on material things, then probably you have to shift your perspective and. And if you are living in a world where there's no money, then you will probably see what you are really yearning to do from within. If it's music, art, or whatever you're good at. But sometimes they are in friction with what they're good at and what they want. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes they are so good at this one that they couldn't live it, but this is the direction that they want. Mm -hmm. So th that's a harder conflict as well. Yeah. I think for me, it was like a moment like that. When I look back on it, I'm like, oh, that was a moment where I felt really strong in myself. Mm -hmm. And like, I felt the energy pulling on me to go against what I knew, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. So um, a quick question on astrology. Um, mm -hmm. How did you go into astrology and what push you to that direction? That's a great question. Um, so I've, as a kid, I loved it. I thought it was like co the coolest thing. Um, <laughs> they like had toys about astrology. There were like stickers out. Like there was like, I mean, it was like in our culture, you know, like you could go through a grocery store and you'd see horoscopes mm -hmm. up there. And like, sometimes we'd read them as a kid and like laugh, you know, it was just like, but mine were always like kind of spot on. <laughs> and I always, yeah. as a kid, I was kind of like, that's, that's cool. They're tapping into something, you know, I was like, there, there's something there. Um, and I think I ended up not pursuing astrology for a long time because I was raised Christian. And so I was taught that astrology was demonic or that it was dark. And I actually, early on in college, I met this uh, pastor in Florida who showed me, like, he blew my mind about astrology and like the truth behind it. And he was a Christian, but at that time I was, I was kind of like, I'm not religious anymore. You know, it's like, I, I just like, I see, you know, the divine in everybody. And it just like, I don't know. It just didn't make sense for me to label it. Um, but he showed me 
a take on astrology that opened my heart and opened my eye to it. And I began to like, I felt freedom to study it. So I just started self-studying. I started like, you know, looking at charts and calculating my own birth information and reading up on it. And then I decided to take a class. Um, and I decided to take this class shortly after my divorce. Or no, it was it was right before I got divorced. And in the class, like I was just like learning all this information. Um, and from there, like I basically just like yeah. start doing readings for people. And I think in that class, like I kind of began to see um, everything that I had studied myself. Like I, I was capable of teaching myself. Like I didn't have to, I didn't have to go to a class. Like I already knew this stuff innately. Um, so I think that's kind of where it yeah. came up. Oh, wow. Um, so when you say also you channel, right? So, mm -hmm. um, do you channel for the collective or some sort or like collective messages or also yeah. Yeah. another quick question on that one? How do you channel? Do you have uh, what do you call that? Like, do you step away or you're still there or you're, what do you call that? Consciously con channeling. Yeah, I, I'm consciously channeling when I channel. I can like hear as I, and it, it's more like through listening, like as I listen to the emotional body, as I listen to what I see or hear, I begin to receive awareness and wisdom. And I just, I speak it or I write it. Oh, wow. So not suddenly speak. Oh, yeah, you speak it suddenly. Yeah. So um, do you, do you want to channel right now or it's fine? That's for next time. You know, I was actually thinking, and I love that you're saying this because, like, I was imagining it. It'd be fun to do a follow-up call with you and, like, open your chart and, like, share yeah. with you. If, if you want, like, it might be fun. And then, like, I feel like you'd have a better picture kind of of what I do. Um, and I'd love to do that for you. I actually have a YouTube channel, and mm -hmm. I'd love to even interview you in exchange, like, in that process. And just Thank hear you. a little bit about you. If you're let's up for see it. for lay. Let's see for later. I'm kind of. That's yeah. okay. One, one thing that I will say, I don't always channel live, um, and the reason is because sometimes I'm given really personal information. Yes. Um. So that's kind of, I think, part of the reason I don't often do it. You may mm -hmm. have seen the live that I did in the Star Seed group. I'm not sure if you have, um, where I was partnering up with my friend Ben mm -hmm. we held like healing space and um just kind of like space for anyone who needed it and there I was channeling some personal things for people so I don't know I whenever I do it if I do share it like on YouTube or a podcast or something I always like edit out the really personal parts yeah. because you know it's like unless someone is comfortable with that but yeah that's just kind of how I roll <laughs> that's cool well, technically, sometimes when I do my, just a quick one, when, sometimes when I do my Akash reading and when I'm channeling the images and everything, sometimes mm -hmm. when I try to translate it and I translate it in a uh, different analogy, it suddenly yeah. cuts off my thought. That's like, nope, can't say that. Then I suddenly blanks out like, oh, sorry, what was the question again? Because I got yeah. cut off it's like, yeah. Oh, uh, what was I thinking again? <laughs> yeah, that so. happens to me too. Yeah, I probably did it earlier in the call. I felt, I felt in a moment where I was like, like when I was talking about my divorce, like I was like, I could share about this, but that's not what we're talking about. I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know. One thing I found when we that is happening is like they're saying, nope, not, not at the time that they need to hear about it. <laughs> so sometimes yeah. you are about to blurt out something. This is the prophecy. Then suddenly, nope. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Like if there's something bigger to share, is that what you mm -hmm. mean? Yeah. So my other question is like, um, so do you see also aura? Oh, so what kind of clears do you uh do you have? Like, do you see auras? Because you now you can you can see uh higher selves yeah. and you can talk to them and you can see the energetic field. So technically that's aura. Yeah. Yep. Um. So I, I just. Like how I describe it is like I see the body on people. So I see people's energy field. Um, I can see their gifts. I can see when they're not utilized. Like I can see when their passion is like squashed. Mm -hmm. you know, like I can, I can feel that and I can see it in people. 
Um, so I would say like clear seeing, and mm -hmm. I, I can't remember like all the names for yeah, it. Yeah, I just use the simple words. <laughs> I, I can remember as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, same. I have clear feeling. Um, sometimes I'll get clear taste. Like I'll, I can like taste like um, someone's favorite meal or I'll taste oh, wow. like a cigar or like, you know, it's like I can like pick up on different sensations that aren't my physical body, but they're my spirit body. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I can even, um, I'll sometimes hear voices and I can like describe the voice or I can like, they'll sing a song or like I'll, I can like, I experience through all my clairs um, and in doing readings it can come through different ways, but I always just like the strongest for me is clear seeing and feeling. Yeah, I guess as well, because you are like just touching like, oh, I can see. So technically, after, probably after this show, no, don't touch me. I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so uh, my other quick question for the light bodies do you mm -hmm. how what do you see them like human form orb mm -hmm. or different shapes yeah so like i'll see you right mm -hmm. and like around you i'll see parts of your team i'll see pets you've had i might see um i can see different colors that you're like operating in in your aura so like you know if like if someone's more creative or they're tapping into their joy they're gonna like radiate yellow mm -hmm. orange um, I can see people's gifts, like in the golden part of the aura. I can see, um, I can see all kinds of things. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like it, you have a quantum eye or something. Yeah. And it's different every session too, which is the fun part. Cause it's like, sometimes I go in, I have no idea what's going to come up. Like, like I know some things to share about the chart, but as soon as I get in front of someone, I'm like, whoa, oh, that's what that means. Like, that's what I was seeing. You know, it's just like, it, it comes into like clarity. You should probably write a books on what you see yeah. because you've seen a lot and like because like suddenly i have uh 100 cases of this and this and this because of you have too many samples now you have a uh, solid data to back your book or something yeah. probably yeah. that's a good one as well so yeah. my other question is like have you encountered or um uh, do you have awareness of your past lives? Yes. In on earth and off earth. Yes, I do. There you go. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, can you tell me more about it? <laughs> yeah. So, I the clearest one I have. Um, like, do you want to hear on earth or off earth? Like, what are you? What are you more? Excited? I like more off earth, but we can okay. go both ways, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah, I off Earth. Um, the most clearest incarnation that I can recall off Earth at the moment is Cassiopeia um, in Andromeda, and mm -hmm. I was actually there with my mother, who is my mom in this time, and we were sisters. Wow. And it's funny because my mom always calls me by her sister's name, and she she always laughs and she's like, "You you've always felt like my sister. You've always felt like a best friend to me." And, and like, <laughs> well, I was for a long time. But oh. then I, I, I actually, I, I don't know if you watch Gaia. Are you familiar with the Gaia channel? I do, but I, I watch a little. Yeah, they did this amazing um, coverage on Andromeda. And mm. I sent it to my mom and I said, just tell me what you think after you watch this. And she was like, that was us. She's like, she's like, I knew it. She's like, you and I were sisters or something. You know, it's like she felt it and got it when she was presented with information um so yeah her and i do have those kind of conversations we do she remembers faintly i remember like colors i remember like things i ate on that planet i remember oh. i remember the clothes i'd wear i remember my body was like almost like neon like vibrant pearlescent like it was not like skin here um so there's a lot of things i do recall and every day i feel like more memories come in and as i talk to more people and we activate each other, I feel like more memories come in. So it's it's an ongoing remembering, I feel like. Oh, wow. So tell me more about the earthbound ones. Say it again. The earthbound oh, memories. The earthbound ones. Yeah, so when I got my, um, my animal, my pet, Opal, um, her and I were like, when I met her as a puppy, um, my dog, she she just felt familiar to me like i like i knew her and as she grew 
I had a past life from Rome come back to me where I was a, a soldier oh, wow. and I was a man <laughs> and she was actually a horse. And like when her and I would go running together, I could tap back into that physical body of that man. And I could tap into that feeling when I'm running and I do it at the gym all the time. Cause like it helps, <laughs> me, it helps me run, you know, like it, it, I can really like tap into this, the stronger physical mm -hmm. form. And, um, it just like, it kind of made a lot of past experiences in my life, this mm -hmm. lifetime makes sense, like as an athlete or other things, but, um, yeah, I just like, that was really special because she activated that in me, that remembering. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of one little scenario. That's one. That's very cool. So, um, I love these well, questions, by the way, I feel like I'm going to ask you all the same ones because oh. like, I feel like you've got so much the, to say. <laughs> I have a lot, but they're not on earth. They're, they're, they're not on earth. And when I, when I, my awakening, it's an out of body experience. And they say when you're on out of body and when you're astral, go find a mirror in your house and yeah. look at it. Yes. People say they have an orb or they see a human shape and mine is different. And that's when I knew something else. So mm. then, then the the thing that triggered my awakening is uh, technically a keyword that I heard from some random news. Like they said, star seed. And I was like, then I started becoming hungry for information. Then I thought, mm -hmm. keep on looking for ETs and everything. Then here I am now. But <laughs> that's for another. Uh, that's yeah. for another story. I mean, segment. maybe when when you and I do a second call and I open up your chart for we you. We may have to get more calls about this one because it looks like you have a lot of stories that I have to unlock. <laughs> and I think one hour call won't even cover it. <laughs> and I'm also, I love to to hear people's stories too. So like, you know, it's like hard for me to sit here and not ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it looks like we can create a, a collab podcast and suddenly we grill someone oh how about you did do this and that suddenly they're people <laughs> because like okay. technically we're like a uh, same experience at, at most but i just woke up like april last year wow and i'm That's... i'm a, a skeptic very skeptic if i don't see it i don't sense it not how gonna happen mm -hmm. i'm that That's... hard skeptic so it really broke my beliefs. Yeah, that's so, good. I think it's good to be um, discerning. Yeah. Well, technically, you can still be skeptic, but now in creating healthier boundaries, because now we're more multidimensional and not everyone is awake, and you have yeah. to respect them in their in, on that timeline, because maybe on another timeline, as you jump, they may yeah. change. Yeah, so, I can. So. <laughs> Here you go. So um, my next question will be, it's like for the masses. It's more like, where do you think the world is heading with what's happening right now? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's happening in your timeline because I've denied some of the happenings on my timeline and they just... Yeah. So... Say I'm... that one more time because so, I had a hard time hearing you. Where, where do you think the world is heading right now? Where the world is heading? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so i actually shared this recently on another um recording where i was talking about in astrology how we're beginning to see a split of two timelines mm -hmm. where you can actually track it in some apps like if you look at the pattern app and then you look at like the news like the news that tracks the moon they're in two different recordings so one's in like virgo and then one's in leo Oh, wow. And it's almost like time is turning in two different ways now. And it's almost like the world, like the earth, is beginning to shift into two separate timelines. Um, and I'm not clear on exactly how that looks fully, <laughs> but I am aware of kind of the sensations that I'm feeling that others are describing. And I can see kind of how that will begin to, to pull apart. And I think the world is headed to a place where those who are ready to start 
new or start a new earth, I think they're coming online. I think they're about to tap into, you know, their powers, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like we're already experiencing it. I know I've been, I know several people are, um, but I think like, as we're beginning to, to experience that, that timeline split, um, people will begin to operate at 5D or they'll be operating at 4D, 3D. So there's that split there. And people can just choose. They can choose to operate in the 5D level, begin to build a new earth, begin to um, create safe, safe havens, safe spaces on the earth, begin to build communities, begin to build, you know, build back up. And there will be spaces, I think, that are created through natural disasters. I think there will be separation of land. Um, I've also seen that that there will be a lot of like destruction as well. And we've been seeing that. We've been seeing kind of like the threats of that. Um, we've been seeing that happening in around the world, like in Palestine. Like we, we've been seeing like, you know, mm -hmm. the most horrific things happening, taking place on the earth right now. Um, and at the same time on the other side of the planet we're seeing like natural disasters and like the threats of war coming so it's like it's almost like the two timelines are are splitting now yeah i think also when uh when because the awakening is technically it's your free will right which timeline you want to go i yeah. think what's happening right now is everything was hidden before hidden wars hidden disasters now people are starting to see them and when they see them they now have a conscious choice to empower that belief or to move or to be compassionate and say on my time i don't want that in my timeline or something then right. they move out of it right and i i i had a lot of soul integration more like you know when you're calling all your souls together to you like mm -hmm. you're reconnecting yourself and when they normally come they sometimes come in as a dream or as a mental image mm -hmm. and i've experienced a lot of post-apocalyptic experiences that me decided this did me decided that mm -hmm. and there, there's multiple too many to say but <laughs> and there's multiple earths as well like there's everything is true that's all i can say there's flat earth there's round earth everything is through this hello it mm -hmm. depends on which timeline you want to believe in yeah that's actually, where yeah. the split goes on yeah. so but that's that's a bigger rabbit hole that we can we can talk about yeah. it for one hour and everyone's mind will it so yeah <laughs> maybe it should like i'm at yeah i'm at the place in my journey where i'm just like i'm ready for people to wake up mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm like look at this world you know it's like and I, I just believe like, I mean, we're in the time of the dragon, you know, mm -hmm. and we're also in the time of the divine feminine waking up. And I just feel like there are so many angry women on this planet right now, yeah. who are really ready to see a shift. And I think part of my call, even being here at this time is to, is to shake the divine feminine and to say like, Hey ladies, like we're more powerful than we think. Like we can we can change things like we don't have to to put up with the way things are going here and yeah I just, I just like i'm i see a lot of women who are awake at this time and some of them almost like need to be told like you can do this you know it's like yes. they, almost like they need to be given permission and i don't know how familiar you are with astrology um but I'm, I'm called what's it's called a triple fire oh. and I'm someone who brings rapid change to the earth. I'm someone who brings, you know, I, I can push people in a, in a way that's healthy. And it's like, it's like a challenge, but it, it is my, like, it's my gift. Like I love there to in the best way and bring out the best in them and, you know, encourage them on to, to be, you know, a conduit of light here. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my my purpose i would say like here to bring rapid change and growth <laughs> i can see that already <laughs> so um before we end the show the show i have some few quick questions so um 
what do you think uh what does it mean to live authentically authentically to yeah live because some people's like uh you say show your true self but i will will be judged i see myself in the mirror i throw a lot of judgment on it before i even open my mouth so, so for you how do you think people will have to live authentically for themselves and outside outside them yeah. i would say it's one step at a time <sighs> baby you know, steps baby steps literally yeah. i mean that's what it is it's like it's like you literally look one foot in front of the other as you begin. And sometimes that's as small as like um, a color you wear. Like you're like, I, I always wear black. I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna wear blue today. You know, it's yeah. like I wanna I wanna I wanna wear like this this bright color or like I wanna mm -hmm. embody this. So like you're gonna put yourself out there a little or yellow or or maybe you're gonna talk about a dream you had and you don't talk about it normally, or maybe you like um maybe you start studying astrology, you know, it's like, it's like one little step and you test the water almost like you're dipping your foot in, you test the energy and it's almost like the magic carpet and like yes. Aladdin, that, that step and you feel the pressure of the universe lifting you. Yeah. I think as long as you can make even a small step forward, it's better than not taking a step, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if you believe that the universe is going to meet you with that small step, it's like, how much of a risk really is it? I know. And it's small step every day. If you put in a year, that's 365 steps, even if it's small. So anyway, at least you're better than yesterday. I think that's the more important yeah. part. Also, the what uh, what are the services are you offering that right now? Or probably also in the future, because I can hear that you you can life coach as well. Yeah, so I currently, um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I have long-term clients and then I have short-term clients. Um, I love one-on-ones. That's like where I'm my most helpful and my most powerful. Um, so I love to do that. I also love to do astrology readings, light body readings is what I call them. Mm -hmm. And that's where I open up someone's chart and then I channel their divine yeah. self, their child self. Um, and I just have a conversation with them. And for a lot of people, that's a divine turning point in their life. Um, so those are the two main things I do. I also do tarot readings. Um, I do workshops. I teach classes. And I also sell art. Like I'm an oh, artist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so like I, I do spirit paintings. Like I can do like auric body uh, drawings as well. And um, I do photography. Like it, it's no. just... <laughs> You have, you, know, a, kinds of things. Yeah, you have a lot yeah, any, <laughs> you should start to shop <laughs> yeah i you know i i've been toying with the idea of a trade market um would be fun i think but yeah just a lot of things are in the works right now and as you know like we live nomadically so we travel and um set up at different markets different places and mm -hmm. i do my live calls different places we go so yeah it's that's kind of how it how it looks right now well technically it's a blessing with with our technology right now if we were to do this in like 50 100 years ago it's yeah. gonna be so hard but right now we can do everything remote so yeah. um, where can people find you or more about you yeah if if you want to connect with me you can message me on facebook um just add me as a friend and send me a message I love to I love to write to people and I love to connect on there. You can voice record. Um, it just feels more personal in, on Facebook than yeah. like an email or something. Do you have groups that you're on with as well when you're sharing as well? I I'll do. put the I'll put all the links in the yeah. notes when I publish yeah. this. I'm an admin um, in one of the Starseed groups online and. I can send you the link to that group because I'll I do lives in there often. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um thank you for having me and for being in the show. You are you're a joy to talk with and looks like I may have to reschedule another one or more. <laughs> because looks like we have a lot to cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lawrence, yeah. I've had a lot of fun talking with you and thank you for opening your space. I it, it is a gift to get to share. So thank you. Thank you. So um, 
with that, thank you for having me. Good night. Mm-hmm. <laughs>